So Fintech, what's, what's the big deal of this? What's the big deal about Fintech? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you're speaking in London, which is the Fintech capital of the world. Yeah. Uh, so if you're going to speak in that, it will fight you. Just um, yeah, so where I mean, you mentioned um, where uh, Startup Bootcamp Fintech is located here, it was founded um, in the rainy month in 2014. So we're an accelerator program for startups in the financial services space. So we've had two um, cohorts go through the program here in London. Uh, we recently branched off uh, the insurance part of the FinTech program. So we have a brand new InsurTech accelerator program, which is actually going on right now downstairs. They meet for the program. Uh, and we've also moved on to uh, open up a FinTech program in Singapore and New York. Um, so even though, know, as I said, chiefly in London is the FinTech capital, we're really big on sort of uh, expanding that uh, global ecosystem to include other other fintech hubs. Um, I'm a big fan of, of fintech uh, because I really think financial services is a different industry piece compared to other verticals because it underpins all other industries. You know, if you want to open up a cupcake shop, you're going to have to deal with a bank account and point of sale and invoicing and payroll. So and all of that is fintech, all that's financial services. So. It touches so many other industries, that's why it's so important. Okay. Mario, can you give us your account on fintech and how you go about innovation and some time there in general? Okay, can you repeat that? Can you, go, can you tell us about how you go about um, fintech innovation and some time there? Yeah. So, we recently, uh, the life of, uh, of, of Santander in the uh, fintech is quite recent. So uh, it's uh, yes, it's one of the very largest banks in Europe. But let's say that uh, in uh, with the fintech space, where we are uh, a new car. Uh, yeah. uh, we created uh, one year ago uh, an innovation in order to really uh, put our uh, get get moving into the new arena, and um, uh, and we have created different initiatives in that sense. So um, the first ones, and that I'm going to talk about the ones that are more related, and I know more about that, is that we have created a communication layer between the banking industry, or actually between Santander and the startup community. So what happens at the end, and we see it with all the startups, is that the startups at the end, uh, they have a, a, a DNA, a, a specific mindset, and the, uh, and the banks, we have a different mindset, because we are about in a different stage of our of our life, so uh, in order to be able to do both ecosystems, in order to be and able to engage them, uh, what uh, we are trying is to create a communication layer through vehicles that help to engage both ecosystems and make efficient that relation. So basically, is how I came into the innovation. Uh, uh, and JP, how do you go about fintech innovation? Um, with our current client, yes. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, just to clarify, really, to start, so I work with RBS, and RBS has actually specifically an innovation center, an innovation team, uh, for those that may know. Uh, so, you may want to actually reach out to them, but I can explain to you in, in, in um, kind of a, a, a structure how it works and how you can go about contacting them or actually think about you know why you want to contact you know somebody like RBS, which applies to some of the other banks right um and, and i was thinking about this you know in kind of preparation of today i'm um, sorry before anything actually i want to thank you thank you for the invite and thank you everyone for coming uh, and then secondly so i was thinking about like um so what is it we have to really think about what is it that you are doing what you want to do and who is your best partner, right? So we have the case of the accelerator, which helps you in a way, you know, to kind of learn a bit more about yourself, what you try to do, and who, you know, your, your skills, your strengths, and who could be your best partner. You know, and one of them potentially could be, you know, just to promote a bit of the, the bootcamp here, you know, the, the, the guys are here, but that's why I think you have to do your kind of due diligence and understand who is, you know, the best uh, company to work with. In the case of RBS, what they do, a bit like the communication layer here, they had a uh, kind of innovation center and, and, and a structure from which one of them is actually a scouting team. So if you think that your product specifically would fit with RBS strategy and product selection or you know, a specific product that you that they have 
right now or that they're developing or one that you think that they could actually use. What you have to do is try to be seen by the scouters. Um, uh, and, and ultimately what happens is that if they're interested and they think that your uh, that basically your project has eggs, they will try to see the possibility when you go through a process and the possibility of um, using uh, RBS or Google RBS as a pilot. Um, uh, which obviously then if it works, you know, you have RBS as one of your clients, which as you all uh, may know, must know, will make a huge difference if you are going to go and uh, try to fundraise. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, well, FinTech, I mean, why is it such a buzz at the moment? Because there's so many small companies that invent new technologies, come up with algorithms, um, come up with new infrastructures, sidelining banks as well, which are obviously traditionally the, the main infrastructure for transferring money across um, the world. And um, what is what is the big deal about the sort of um, that companies and corporates feel um, when they kind of think about fintech? Is it is this some sort of anxiety in, in place, or uh, do they feel the smaller startups, or do they feel like they're missing out on a bit of a innovation trend? What is the kind of feeling that the corporates have towards the fintech space? Because I feel like of all startups, and the fintech ones are the ones that actually closest to the corporates and also raise the most uh, interest or attraction of the corporates, right? I want, so I haven't had an evolution regarding this. I would say that the, the, the first um, it was uh, probably because you didn't know what was the, uh, the, 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 the effect that it, it could happen, fear. Yes, I mean, I would say that probably there was this fear. But then it comes the next reaction, which is awareness. Mm. And when you engage with them, and you can start to talk a lot with the startups, you see that really there is more place in common. And it's not just for saying it, it's actually it is uh, when, when you come to analyze their businesses uh, than what it really uh, should be. Mm. So when, when, you read, when you reach that moment, then uh, it happens that really startups, you see two kinds of startups. And actually, this is going to configure one of the things that we were discussing, what is going to be the fintech of the future. Mm -hmm. And it's a, which kind of role do you want to have within the ecosystem? Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter of where you are disrupting. It's a matter of how you want to disrupt. Mm -hmm. So um, you have some of these startups where they have uh, decided that they are going to go with banks. So they are going to be competitors. And fine, I mean, mm -hmm. That's the, it's just a matter of knowing, you know. And, uh, but then, then you have others which they have taken another route and they have said, Why I want to do that? And an example of this, for example, if you should come into the lending. Mm -hmm. So if you come into the lending, which probably is one of the niches that is more developed, you can see that there, there is already quite developed startups, which actually they are not established anymore, they are establishing businesses. Some of them they are standalone and just developing their business model, competing in lending. But other ones, they are uh, partners of banks, and actually they are leveraging, uh, we are leveraging their technology. Mm -hmm. So an example of that is, uh, uh, um, we did a, uh, we have recently done a, a, a partnership with uh, Cabbage, which uh, is one of the, let's say, two incumbent, two, two, two larger uh, e-lenders in the US. So uh, I would say that, the evolution that we are having, and probably we are coming a little bit further, is that um, fear is <coughs> challengers and challenge. Challengers were the new entrants, challenge that were the traditional ones. And that is evolving. That is evolving as the own ecosystem is evolving, mm -hmm. and as the people is experiencing different. And so that is not going to be anymore that clear, that boundary. And challengers and challenge, they're going to be a mixture. And you are going to have challenges that they are traditional banks with partnerships. You are going to have new. Uh, you are going to have traditional banks that they are doing their own initiatives. If you see, for example, M Bank, uh, that's a, that's a, a new digital bank. No. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think that uh, the, the, the 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 first reaction that we have come it was fear, awareness, and then it's coming into a new space. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, the one thing I wanted to add really is about collaboration. Um, you know, the big change, for example, that I have noticed, which really, you know, kind of uh, so, surprised me at the same time and pleased me, is that um, you know we are now a lot more open to working with uh, startups, to working with um, you know, people outside of the big organizations. 
and the reason is simple, right? So, you know, you have the creativity. Uh, just to summarize, say, if I had to do it in two points, right? Creativity and agility. So you are a low leaner, you know, you can move faster, you can do things quicker, you can decide. Uh, so, and, 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 and that, in the new organization, as you know, right, we're restricted in so many ways, we just cannot do it. So it's kind of, uh, you know, that what, what, is, what is happening, and it's been happening, you know, like, like for at least two years in some of the organizations, right, is that they are open to working with anyone that is smart enough, you know, brave enough, uh, creative enough uh, to come up with these solutions, you know, to solve the problems that we have. Uh, and, and even to come up with solutions to problems that we didn't even think that we have because, you know, we need growth, right? So we need new ways to do things. We need to innovate, you know, to actually keep up with the newcomers, right? So the market now is, like, so different from just, uh, you know, I don't know, just let alone 10 years ago, let alone maybe five years ago, and it's just, you know, super fast, you know, in terms of changing. So. I think that that is a big thing. So collaboration, being open, you know, so and everyone wants to actually uh, work with you. So yeah. I, I would I would actually be in with the consciousness of collaboration. Um that's what you guys talked about. Um about uh, two years ago when I um put together a startup with the fintech companies, this was during sort of the height of the disruption narrative that you know I mean headline we saw said fintech would come and destroy all the traditional banks. And the number one question from the startups was, how are we selling the banks? Um, banks are the biggest customer mm -hmm. of fintech companies. Um, we had even nine startups in the fintech cohort last year. One of them was a customer-facing startup. The rest of them all wanted to sell into banks or large financial institutions. So partnership is really going forward. And I would say even the I mean, outside of the whole challenger bank um, trend that's going on right now, a uh, little, little, little guy. How, does anyone know how many banks are applying for a banking license in the UK right at the moment? Zero. <laughs> oh, really? Um, but, uh, you know, outside of that, I mean, you look at, um, I really think where we've seen this challenge to banks, like especially like the transfer losses of this world. They're really coming up, and also the lender space, which I agree with you, is much more mature and not startups. They're becoming not alternative finance, but mainstream finance. Um, they're going into the parts of the business that banks don't have any interest in anymore. Banks have no, banks made money transfers complicated and expensive. It's on the Swift network because they don't want to be in that business. So, of course, there are players going into that space. So, I think. The disruptive narrative that fintechs are going to come and destroy the banks is naive and stupid, but it's much more complicated to say that the future is going to be this shifting ecosystem of tech players and banks and telcos and you know labs, and uh, that's much more I think what we're seeing going on. But why isn't that the, the, the startup industry or the fintech industry in particular? I mean, based on what you were saying, it's actually that you know there's some sort of fear. I don't know if the startups actually make the incumbents stumbling and there's some sort of innovation happening outside, they can't catch up. Would you say that man, there's like an overall trend that the fintech startups actually respond to some sort of stalled innovation within the banking sector? Well, I mean, I think I'd tell the last one. <laughs> um, I mean, we, Startup Bootcamp, um, have our funded by the partners. And our partners include people like Lloyds Bank, and MasterCard, and Robo Bank. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, working with startups is how it's supposed to be R&D. Yeah. You know, 40% of our IT spend in the UK is done by banks, but that is dealing with maintaining legacy systems and complying with regulations. The, they don't have a lot left over to play in the sandbox. The startups do. So let the startups play, and then the banks can then take. So it's basically outsourcing innovation, but at the same time, they also outsource the risk at the same time, right? Because I think, um, Mario, I think when we, you know, a few weeks ago we had an evening discussion on on the um, on the mindset um, of startups as well as on on banks. I mean, there's a huge discrepancy between the two, right? And how do you go about incorporating the startup mindset, and or is it just the products basically of the startups you're trying to incorporate? So, I think that the what we have to think is that is not um, what is. I mean, my, my opinion is that what is going on is not new products. What is going on is new business models. Mm -hmm. So when you are when you are talking that what is coming on is new business models, you can't just incorporate okay, there is a product over there, new product, then I buy it, I incorporate it with the bank. So 
So definitely there is going to happen the things that the banks where you have win with the banks will have loads of numbers. But with sometimes, I mean, if you see, and you and we were discussing this, you see the new startups that they are doing, and you see the backgrounds of many of, of those uh, entrepreneurs within the fintech, they, they come from the industry because they know what it has to be changed. So, uh, so the, 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 the knowledge is there. Uh, the point is that, uh, as I was saying initially, in the banks we are at a, at a stage, our models is about running efficiency in a mature industry. So, all processes and organization is structured towards that object. So it's not possible to ask with that structure and those processes mm -hmm. to test there. Yeah. Uh, where that's actually the objective that when you're creating a new business, what you have to do because you are exploring new worlds and new, new arenas. Mm -hmm. blue, what you would, uh, in marketing would say blue oceans, mm -hmm. things that no one has been there. No? Mm -hmm. So on that, I think uh, 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 if the startups and banks, uh, they want, and why the startups, the mindset is about the standard, the GDP, everything that we say. So if we want to bring down, bring together both ecosystems, mm -hmm. uh, to banks, one, to change their whole structure, mm -hmm. it's going to take time. Uh, so, uh, what you have to create is within that big ecosystem, little ecosystems that are like connectors mm -hmm. with those startups and that understand and are able to work with the startups. So, um, uh, and that's the short term solution uh, in order to, to do it. And uh, I think banks initially, because it was our DNA, it was having all our technology out of the banks, the core one. Now, I, the more that I talk, and it's not everyone, but the more that I talk, is we come to the conclusion we don't have to need, we don't need to have the core technology at the bank. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, uh, and that's a change of the mindset. Mm -hmm. That uh, that is going to play a, a big role into how the industry is going to be configured. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where we are going to end up. What I'm sure is that how we define our technology and what we have in and what we have out is going to change. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. JP, <laughs> how would you go about the, um, the process of, um, and if you quite start as a bank, obviously there's lots of regulatory issues, right, um, which startups don't have to deal with. Um, would you say that this some sort of inhibits the Incorporation of the startup itself, the technology can't cannot be absorbed into the bank. I mean, how would you deal about making sure that everything that the startup has been doing um, meets the requirements of the regulator? Mm -hmm. yeah. So one actually. <laughs> yeah. So maybe 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 be more 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 technical of perhaps uh, the these specific things that I have. Um, no, but I'm. We're kind of on the relationship with the startups, but uh, you know, yes, I agree. You know that the regulatory environment is, is is very tough, and actually, it's one of the things that prevents us from actually doing a lot of things, which is to your benefit. Um, I think, I think what you have to do is, you know, you have to again. I'm going to jump back to the first point I made, which is, you know, to find that relationship, right? To find that sponsor, you know, in terms of that partner. Uh, you know, and they will they will actually do everything that is required. They will give you, you know, where we have very clear, you know, you know, checklists of everything that we need to comply with, um, and, and and basically everything that's going to be carried carried out. You know, okay. at least you know if you get into the you know, to to grow the world by right, the ecosystem of a bank, right? So, and, and nothing will be done unless you are basically you know fully approved from that perspective, yeah. right? Um, I, I, I kind of put my hand up and say that you know we, we cover every every compliance, uh, but we're getting better at it uh, you know, by the day, uh, and, and it's true. So you know I don't know if you know in terms of the industry, but you know the one job that you want to have if you want security in the, in the industry today in banking is compliance for at least the next seven years. Uh, that's, uh, Anyone have a reg tech startup? Yeah, <laughs> and there are, there are a couple. There are a couple of really good. Uh, if you go to Innovate Finance, right, there's like some KYC specific ones, which is a big issue that we have had. Uh, maybe changing now with uh, with uh, blockchain, etc. But um, but but those are the issues, right? Um, so I think to go back to a point, it will be covered, right? So you won't get in unless that gets covered. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 that collaboration. If you think about it, you know we are. Professionals at it, yeah. you know, from a compliance perspective. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing really to 
to um, to fear, and I think that's what the strengths, you know, working with somebody that already knows everything needs to, that needs to be done mm -hmm. comes to comes comes handy. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Something else I can say about that for previous one. I'd like to add something. Right I'm of my so when a startup actually say it's being acquired by by a corporate, and I think one of the most pain points for startups is mainly if they have developed some sort of smart algorithms to test and test run the algorithms right. I mean, if I do like an online trade platform, say, and I've got a couple of thousand transactions every day, and I'm to change something in these transactions, I go to a different online trading platform and maybe use the data and test my algorithm against the data. I think within the banks, you cannot really get hold of or put your hands on, 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 the, on the customer data because it's very confidential. So, and I, I would think that the most, or many fintech startups having developed some algorithms around financial transactions, customer data, how data is being handled, infrastructure as well, how do they go about testing all of this? I mean, do you guys provide them with a testing ground at Startup Bootcamp Fintech or at Santander? I mean, is there some sort of sandbox within the bank where startups can play around with or? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a, a trend, I mean, as, as I was saying, we're, we're a great nation, but uh, within uh, the industry space, but uh, we are trying to keep the pace. So we have, in that sense, we have a day innovation and we have a bank. Mm. So it's not in the business as usual. The innovation area, just you to get it, uh, how it goes, it goes from the president, it's not from the CEO, so it's out of the business as usual. And then we have a bank. So um, that, obviously, is within the bank, so you have to be regulated. But you have a common, sometimes it's not about being regulation, it's how you interpret the, the regulation and how you approach it. So, in a bank that is 180,000 people, if each of those startups they try to engage with different departments across the whole bank, it's, it's, it's impossible. That needs to be very disruptive, right? <laughs> it, it will be impossible to do it. So, what we're trying to do there is to create a, a bank, which it has a secure bank. But all the people over there, they have come about the experience of engaging with a startup and doing a proof of concept and and deploying that product onto the customer base, not once, yeah. but a hundred times. Mm. So obviously they have to behave on a on a, on a, on a, on a, a regulated environment. Mm. They can lower the levels, but that people they come with the hat of knowing what the entrepreneurs and that dialogue. And I think that's the trend that we are going to have. Right. Once that you do that and you understand it, mm. the thing that you have to be with the startup is a is is a roadmap. Of okay, you are if you want to scale, mm -hmm. you uh, you are going to need to meet these regulatory requirements, mm -hmm. and which is going to be the different steps that you are going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by doing it jointly, mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be able then to know exactly what they are needed, mm -hmm. and you to have a, a say on how to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that, this is from the perspective of we are engaging with the startups and they keep their brands. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we are acquiring the startups; mm -hmm. we are doing business together. Right. So um, that's our approach. So it's uh, uh, having banks, actually, these uh, online banks where you can create the right environment in order to be able to engage with yourself. Yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. yeah. Go on, yeah. yeah. I was just going to add um, two, a couple of things, actually. So one is uh, what I've seen is the, the pilot, again, that I mentioned before, and that pilot is kind of the safe environment where you just work with a small group of clients within the bank. And that's why you are basically safeguard, right? And the other one is actually, again, that doesn't apply as much to you, but it's just the agile teams within each product team. And you see them actually on the floor these days, which is, you wouldn't see that, you know, even a year ago. You have like a product team and you have a, a tech agile team in sitting with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have, you know, and some of them you, you see huge agile teams, agile scrum teams, you know, just generating ideas and products and, and, and effectively companies within the company, right? Um, and then the next thing I was going uh, to, just to, to promote uh, your your uh, your um, company really, but uh, it's based just to show the evolution of the industry what's happening, right? So you have something there now, for example, having created a, what is NEC, right? They specialize in FinTech. So, you know, they're creating a, a, a kind of a vehicle outside of, of and parallel to the company, whatever the structure is, right, mm -hmm. to actually start uh, so supporting directly investing and only that. So I'm just now I'm not properly promoting you, right? They are actually, you know, helping the companies uh, um, 
kaya develop and execute ay and and and, and, and grow so which is uh, so that was, and I'm gonna kind of rewind a little bit to the previous question which is what I what I mentioned to you guys what I want you to kind of think about is this understanding of the industry maybe not as much as it was it's good to know what we know the past so that we learn from the mistakes what is happening now very specific about what you know, we all mentioned about the strategies of the banks um, especially the big ones so we depending on which ones, right? But we only have certain capital. We have, you know, huge costs. Everyone's trying to, you know, cut costs and become more efficient. And therefore, there's a lot of, you know, let's call it low-hanging fruit, right? That, that is where, you know, the money for you is today, right? But then also you have to look, you know, again, three, five years, which in the dynamic world we live in, we live in today, is like, you know, five, 10, 15 years of the past, right? And see where is it that is gonna, where the opportunity is gonna come for you and what is gonna happen in terms of, for example, what the SPNA is doing today. Maybe all of them are gonna be doing this and all of them are gonna be, you know, investing in you. Uh, all of them are gonna try to buy you. Uh, so it's a whole combination, right? Mm -hmm. So just to add one uh, regarding this, or as you were saying regarding this, so um, one is that the, the bank and that is uh, structured. That, that kind of initiative, it engages actually with already quite uh, established startups. But uh, there is, so what, we, what, what the banks and uh, what we are creating is different kind of vehicles which meet different needs within the life cycle of a startup. This one, what it meets is the life cycle of a startup where it has already a proof concept, uh, business ongoing, mm -hmm. and what it needs is to engage with customers and really get validated and, and scale. But you have a different mindset that is in, is in the early stage, and, and this is, is something that it happens also, also with uh, accelerators, right? and is that well, when you are on the early stage, it's not only about capital, it's about building a business. And if you see the statistics, one out of 10 startups, they fail within the first few years. You think that one out of, of, of ten they fail in the, within the first three years because the idea was not good. Well, if you cut down really to why they failed, it's not because they, they had a good idea or not. It's because they missed some of the biggest steps regarding building a business. So, uh, uh, if uh, what in that sense what we are beginning with, if there is a good idea there to be leveraged, which is going to be good for the startup and also for the development of the industry and the bank. What you have to help is that entrepreneur in order to build the business. So in that sense, what well, this is the vehicle that we were talking before, which we haven't incorporated, uh, well, we have incorporated, but we are going to do the launch software uh, in the coming month. It's um, a venture builder, which it takes a startup either in from the scratch moment, so with ability and entrepreneur with ability, up to pre-seed, and you help them to do a business. So you put at their service what it is needed in order to do that business. So probably what would be the natural taking is, is when you finalize the accelerators program, is that natural step, it would be at that moment in this kind of program. So I would say that these kind of initiatives, they are going to keep on because definitely, as we were saying before, we need the innovation of the startups. We need it. But I would say neither we know that we can buy it, but not because we don't have the money, <laughs> uh, but because if you buy it and you put it within a, the jungle of efficiency of a bank, you are going to keep the innovation mm -hmm. without wanting, but you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to create different kinds of initiatives with different kinds of DNA, which they are going to meet the necessities of our startups. Uh, so I think, uh, well, I think, in, in, in Banco Santander, I mean, is thinking way ahead in doing this, but I think it's going to be in the whole industry. Maybe we are doing the first ones, but I doubt that all the ones that they believe in the, 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 in, the uh, in the financial industry within X years, they are not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I believe they will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. In terms of you know, insurance, the startups, we're doing the, the banking corporate side, and then they learn how to deal with the startup as opposed to how to deal with them. And um, another type of supplier. And as I mentioned, we're, we're funded by um, partners. And 
and we as you know, one of our partners in our New York program, and our partners in startup boot camp aren't just chosen because they hand over cash. Um, we are kind of particular about who we do business with, and we kind of have a saying that there's a difference between an appetite for innovation and capability for innovation. So whenever a partner comes to us and says we want to be part of the fintech program, one of our first questions is if one of our startups wants to do a pilot, how long will it take? And if they say 12 to 18 months, they can't be a pilot with us. They, uh, they can't be a partner with us because that's a death sentence for a startup. Um, banks have uh, many decades knowing how to deal with the IBMs of this world and the licenses of this world. You cannot hand a startup a 100-page legal document from compliance. That's a death sentence to a startup. Um, so yeah, it's like extending six months to say, no, you can't have that pilot. That's a death sentence to a startup. So I mean, all of those things are basically learnings um, from a bank on how to deal with startups and, and some of this new innovation. Um, last year, Mark Whitney, who's the uh, global head of transaction banking at ING, gave a keynote address at the Euro Bankers Association conference, one of the best conferences in the world. Um, and he talked about that he went to work with a startup um, to, to bring in uh, for a, a mobile application, the transaction bank, the corporate bank. And the startup actually was handed one of these 100 page documents from legal compliance and turned around and said, You cannot do business with IMG. This is ridiculous. You're too old fashioned. And it really caused the bank to stop and look at how they deal with small suppliers. And they now do very small projects, they do projects that are allowed to fail which is never unheard of at a bank. I mean, banks are on a different environment. This isn't about startups, good banks, bad. You know, banks measure risk. They have a different risk environment. They have different regulatory concerns. Um, you know, the best way to kill an innovation project is to say, how do you measure it? Mm -hmm. um, but that's what the culture of the bank is. They measure everything. So it's this learning back and forth. Startups have to learn how to deal with banks, but banks also have to learn how to deal with the startup world in order for both sides to get the most benefit. When you're saying that all the regulations basically kill the innovative element of a startup, um, and if you obviously look at startup as a, as a group of people that is highly innovative because they're not regulated at all, hardly in any way. Um, it's not regulated. Yeah, but I think in a slightly we different way. <laughs> well, in a slightly different way. I mean, I think the same would go also for, say, junior analysts or analysts or people at the beginning of the banking career. I mean, they're quite young, ambitious, and they probably feel quite attracted to startups, and yet in their current position, they can, cannot really innovate or think outside what they're actually supposed to be thinking outside of. So, how would you see that startups or innovation actually working with corporates or with banks in particular um, add to the to the staff basically or to the, to the current employees? I, 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 would, I would think that this also increases employee happiness as well within the banks, doesn't it? They love coming here to dump in that. Yeah, so the question is around what happens within organizations yeah, I mean, with the, let's say, graduates. Yeah. And, so when you, you know, bring the startups, and, yeah. So you bring startups to banks and have them collaborating on projects, and as you said, Mario, on certain levels, and um, how how does that impact the, the staff of the bank or <coughs> working with the startup in itself? Does it kind of rub off the innovative element? Well, I can, I can speak for, for one case, sorry, I can speak for one case specifically, you know, is, um, and I like the word I was going to use before, the mindset change, right? So there is, yeah. there is a mindset change, and it's not recent, you know, like I said, for me, two years is a long time of actually working on this, you know, as I look at it from, from this specific case. Um, and there is a, what is happening right now, there's a lot of promotion actually internally, right? So there is a lot of promotion, there are uh, hackathons, there are... Uh, full days where basically all we're doing is bringing the startups you know we're working with uh, we're bringing specialists we're inviting all the and this is you know the, the, the specialists on the, on the innovation teams inviting all the uh, you know, tech experts that we have uh, and then basically they're pitching and they're uh, uh, poaching people from all the departments oh, really? yeah yeah from all the partners in the bank you know so I, it, it kind of see, again, it's, it's beyond me, but I get involved just to see, you know, how much of this is getting is, 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 is getting traction, how much is changing, right? Yeah. Uh, and internally, there is this you know, engine now, there is this force that's going around the buildings, you know, up and down the country, uh, just basically trying to say to people, you know, come. Uh, there are even, you know, 
one, two days uh, projects, hackathons, you know, where you know people are uh, um, encouraged internally to come up with ideas to how to solve problems. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, once they know that, they, are, they learn about what is happening within the organization. Remember, these are organizations with, let's say, you know, 100 plus thousand employees, right? So you don't, you don't easily know what's going on all the time. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a city within a city, right? Um, and, and basically, that's what happens. So then you get the chance to go and work with all these different cool uh, projects that are happening in the organization, right? Um, and then on top of that, you have, you know, forums, you have um, all sorts of activities that are trying to get the, especially the, the younger generation, you know, the, 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 I would say at least the, within the last five years of people joining the banks, um, you know, there's a huge push to try to um, make them, you know, not just happy per se, but trying to understand, you know, what motivates them, uh, to try to understand, um, try to open actually, you know, ourselves to listening to new ways of thinking. Uh, I think you, you mentioned about, you know, we, we have years and years and years of the way of doing things. Uh, you have, uh, you know, very, very solid cultures on how you are, how you measure, you know, how you actually look at a life, you know, and this uh, translating to your personal life at risks all the time. And, and, and once you look at risks and actually you start looking at any project or any type of situation on what can go wrong, you stop innovating, um, and, and that obviously, you know, we, we need to keep keep people, you know, interested in staying in, right? Uh, and, and, and as we all know, socially as well, just to expand it a bit more, you know, we are changing as as cultures, right? especially in in, in cities uh, like like London and countries like the UK, where people just don't care about money as much as, as they do, right? And banks are not paying as much money as they as they used to. So you know, you have to find all these different ways to make people. Uh, Engage and fulfill. Mm. Well, I think. So I will say that as you were saying, how how was the feeling of the startups when they engaged in the with banks? And uh, I can't talk for other banks. I can talk for for in this case only for for our bank um, <laughs> because I haven't been <laughs> in the real experience of others. So I would say that at the beginning, one one year and a half ago, which I was already in this space, it was frustrating. Because it was, I mean, you know, they wanted to, they were explaining here we can do even, we can do business, I can give you a good proposition that is going to help you to do your customers and so they, it was common sense. But the point is, at the moment, is that the bank is big, I mean, the big banks, they are big transatlantics. So they were just with a way, and they were, and it was not their focus. So you couldn't ask a machinery that is well aligned to reach whatever objectives, to ask them suddenly, hey, keep attention on this, even if it's good. The thing, what it has changed, and the thing is that these changes, they are being quickly, uh, if you take in account the facts that I have said regarding, for example, Banco Santander, January 2004, uh, 2015, January 2015, we created the innovation area. We have created a fund, we have created a bank, we have created another payable, plus a whole organization. So. Banks are willing to change. And now what you see is that a startup engages with the bank and it's different. Why? Because innovation is a focus. And not a focus from PR. It's a focus of doing. Yeah. If you see the innovation area, we are doers. I'm not someone about their to I I execute from nine to twelve in the, at the at the nights, even on weekends, like a startup. So uh, when a startup engages with us, at this moment in time, it's a matter of getting to know it. To, today is too soon. So they're getting surprised. <laughs> they're getting surprised. They say, seriously, this is happening? Well, I can't say that it happens on 100% because we are learning. But in a great percentage, they see that there is a chance. So um, uh, I would say that that has definitely changed the perception from the standards. And then from organization, where you were saying the rest of the organization, mm -hmm. how they are going to see they are in a big transatlantic and seriously, at this moment that the people, they don't feel the thing that disruption in their days. In more of the countries, UK is an exception. If you go across the world and you take out the US, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something that is in the daily life of the people that are managing the financial industry. They don't see head to head that, that a startup is getting their client. So you have to see that 
the guys that we are here are the ones that we know where it's going to work, but not the guys that they are in the transatlantic in some level back there. So those guys, when they see that the president says, within the four pillars, innovation area is key, and we are deploying this amount of money, they always say, what is this about? They are asking me to cost Cali, they are asking here. this is, so why, when is going to be the moment of belief? It's going to be with, oh, when all these propositions that we are doing with the startups, they become success. So success is going to be something really relevant in the near future. So for startups and for banks. So if those collaborations, they don't come into real success, there's going to be definitely a demotivation from the employees and uh, also from the startups that they get. Mm -hmm. So and I would say that is at this moment in time, one of the, in general, one of the, the, the challenges of the FinTech industry is that, uh, that now we have to, in the FinTech industry, to show that there is success, not in terms of money raised by businesses, which said this year it has been no, 12, 12 12.5 billion, no? and then the year before it was four, so basically. Uh, but not success in terms of uh, money raised, but in terms of uh, business performance. So do the lenders do better the job? Do they or not? I would say they can do it. I would say that for the segments that they are doing, they can do a really good job. So uh, that all is going to be a mix in order to bring, bring excitement within the organizations in order to keep on doing things. Yeah. Um, Liz, you're surrounded by startups all the time. Um, you literally breathe the same air. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. I had to tell him to start sleeping again. <laughs> can, you, can you give me your, like, top, you know, don't have to say names, but I mean, what is your top three favorite fintech business models <laughs> in startups? Okay. Um, I'm going to write that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nine wonderful startups that I want to really imagine. Um, one of I, I get irritated, if anyone knows who I am, I get very irritated by buzzwords and by, and um, stuff that's painless. So I have an immense hatred of the term unicorn. Um, and I've been asked constantly, who's the unicorn? Who's the unicorn? Who's the unicorn? Who's the unicorn? You know what? I'm like? I like sustainable businesses. You mentioned most startups fail within three years. I want to see startups continue on and, and survive for longer and longer and longer. Um, you know, we have a benchmark that we work for the energy directors to start a boot camp at 80% of our startups are still trading a year later at 75% get funding three months to demo day. And that's because our goal are companies that work, companies that make money, companies that are sustainable, companies that have a good product. Um, the biggest reason startups fail is team. So when we select our startups, we really look at the team. Is there a team there? We look at the personality tests. Are there more, is there more than one founder? Do they work well together? Um, those are the companies, those are the business models that I like. I'm also a real big fan of unsexy startups, you know, back office infrastructure. You know, regulation. <laughs> um, I just don't want to see uh, what I, I go to a lot of startup pitch events, you know, places like Finnovate, and I've seen a lot of young guys and hoodies play with their phone for seven minutes, and it's awful. And, you know, they get up and say, oh, we've got a better way to pay your restaurant bill. You know, I want to see getting rid of, you know, banks. We talk a lot about banking rails. There are no banking rails. There are little tiny pockets of data separated all around the bank, and they don't talk to each other, and they don't mix. Someone come in and fix that back office infrastructure. We'll put all the old and, um, Yeah, so um, stuff, companies that work, and then are sustained, and last are the business models that I Great. Mary, what is your favorite business models and start fintech startups? Or what are your favorite ones anyway? Uh, yeah. I don't have a preference. Mm -hmm. um, what we see, I mean, that we see in, in common because we also have learned mm -hmm. from uh, initiatives that they have been uh, pure to us mm -hmm. from actually your problems. Uh, so we definitely look to the uh, to the team mm -hmm. because and th th there is another. The statistic because banks will really like get statistics and is that the, the initial idea that the entrepreneur comes with mm -hmm. you know that i don't know which is exact percent mm -hmm. but when the, the business it comes to a mature moment it will have probably pivot or change 80 percent of that idea so really you're not buying the idea what you're buying is the team 
Mm -hmm. uh, then the next thing is uh, is uh, that it has not only a savvy solution, tech solution. For that savvy tech solutions, we can do. Uh, what we what we really look is what problem they are solving. How meaningful is that problem? And then uh, we match it with uh, what is uh, the strategy of the bank. Why? Because if uh, we have to help a startup, uh, the best way of of doing it uh, is by aligning interest. Mm. So uh, maybe what is interesting for me is not as much of interesting for another bank. I'm not an investment bank. I'm a commercial bank. More than 70% it comes from commercial bank. Yeah. So what I look at what is interesting for me, it may not be for for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I wouldn't say within that. I don't have any specific. I know more some business models better than others, but I try to keep open my mind. JP, any favorites? I would just uh, I would just add I would just add again. I'm always thinking of you know of you guys you know sitting there. You know I, I was thinking in my in my head just before you know I was wondering what you all are doing. Uh, but first of all, I would think about you know when when I'm when I'm going to start creating this company is you know is about helping a specific bank. By you know knowing all the strategies of different banks, so you know if all the banks now are cutting down, or you have all the UK banks actually focusing on UK, then just internationalization, you know, being reduced, you know, the footprint being reduced, etc. And basically they are fighting, you know, amongst each other. Let's say all these banks that have the strategy to actually increase their retail uh, presence, right? So if you decide that that is your target market, you have to go and work out with that. So. Big thing I think is retail always, right? And all the different products within retail, within that strategy, being payment, being um, you know, whatever it is. Uh, within organizations, I think you touch it, you touch it with your point, you know, solving problems for organizations, documents, KYC, I'm going to you know, highlight that one again and again. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's cost efficiencies, right? So, you know, the, 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 the steel the machines are so big and the processes are so not fragmented to be polite. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that that's what you that's what you're looking you're, you're thinking about, right? And if you then the other the other way to look at it, I think is you know if you just think about okay, so what is it? And I, and I was thinking about this question before, and, and this is the big question that I really like, which is like what is banking, you know, inverted commas is gonna look like? What is the new banking looks like? Mm -hmm. And and this is you guys, you know, having the chance to create the new banking. So you know it, it could be you know, payments company, it could be, you know, whatever it is that's going to work with what is coming within tech, no, you know, within tech slash finance, right? Um, so, so and, and all that said, once you really decide that, I think it's, uh, to me, it's risk management. Uh, you know, that's the biggest one. That's, that, that, that's, that, that is a core. Uh, and within that, you know, we have all, all the rest, you know, the impacts on balance sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I was thinking about scalability, you know, and because we're talking big volumes here, you know, and, and then you can replicate, you know, with the, with, with, in so many ways in so many different regions now, and you can go and replicate this with other local banks, you know, let's say in other regions, right? Is how scalable you can be. And on the back of that as well, I know that it's, you know, for startups, look at normally and in tech, you know, we don't look at revenue generation as much. In the case of IBB, in the case of banking, there is a lot of you know, revenue to be made. Uh, because you know you are reducing costs, and for every pound or every cent, you know penny that you that you reduce the cost for a bank, right? Everyone's going to be happy to pay you for that. So you can be revenue generation um, generative, you know, from 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 a very very early early stage. You know, not not to put any pressure on the on the investors, right? But yeah, so I was think those those three three uh, three areas. Okay. So. Let me add, because I can add one thing and it's really probably to get uh, kind of pragmatic or one thing is regarding. So when I was uh, when I was saying uh, work in business models you're interested as Santa. But let's come in. As I was saying, we have different vehicles with different DNAs, which give different responses to startups. So within Synthel Ventures, which is early stage, um, the the what we are interested over there is um, Early stage concepts, so let's say two or three entrepreneurs, if they have passed through an entrepreneurial program better, uh, with a proposition that is uh, business to consumer or business to business, but business to business, not as finance and institution, but as a SME, uh, and that uh, it has a clearly business intent. 
So it's not about building a solution and, and let's see afterwards how we make money. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to have a plan of how to get earn money. <laughs> it's not that you have to know it for sure because we will be traded together. Uh, the other thing is actually a concept, uh, I think we should be very nice with people, that it has to be uh, not a solution, it has to be a solution that works well, that uh, travels well across countries within our footprint, because we are going to try to have that struggle. You know, if we go first in the UK, next step we are going to Spain, next step we are going to Poland, next step we are going to Germany, Mexico, Brazil, US which are our core markets. So uh, so that's another thing. Not all of the of the of the business propositions is easy to travel. So um, uh, I would say and, and as you were saying before, actually that one uh, the thing is scaling. Mm -hmm. So it has to clear, clearly be a path on uh, scaling that process. So for Cintel Ventures, that's the specific. Uh, for uh, from the picture, what I have said before. Okay, um, I think we have to keep an eye on the topic. Yeah. Uh, 